Yo, yo, what up? What's good? Shout out to everybody that's here, man. What's good, y'all? What's good, y'all? We back. It's a members only event live. So y'all know we do things a little different. Anyway, shout out to everybody that got the membership. Shout out to everybody catching this replay. But y'all know in the What's Poppin' show, I do things a little different. So anyway, y'all, good to see everybody tonight. Thank y'all all for subscribing and supporting the content. So now we're going to talk about what's been going on. Or I'm going to chime in on what's been going on, which is rap beef. Y'all know I'm the number one person been campaigning about the rap game being over. But it's not about that. It's not about what I said. It's about now y'all finally get to see it all play out. So I'm going to also talk about. Oh, we're going to take a look at who's really getting the money. What is all this beef about? We're going to look at what is all this really about. All right. American hip hop rap is on its last leg. I spoke before about it's only certain artists who are still going to get money in the present day and time. I also told y'all the game is now based on a world fan base. It is no longer about the hood, what the hood thinks. It is no longer about the coolest person that looked the flyest. It's no longer about fake it till you make it. Today, we're gonna talk about real numbers, real numbers that move the economy, real numbers that influence the world. We're talking real talk, all right? So shout out to everybody that's here tonight. Y'all already know how I go. Let's go. It was Papa's show. The New World Rap Order. Well, it's 2024. Y'all heard about a New World Order. But I told you, in my opinion, all it really means is a new order of things. The new way things are going to go. The new things that are going to change the world. So when you're dealing with new, you also dealing with creation. You're dealing with motivation. You're dealing with authenticity. And now we're going to talk about who's really getting money. What, what is all this about? Well, anybody in tune with this channel, y'all know I've been talking about all this for a minute. And I told y'all that the rap game as we once knew it is over. I told y'all last year was the funeral, it was the burial. This is why hip hop now has a hip hop museum, which is called a cemetery. So now we're also gonna look at some of the rappers that have been influencing rap the past 10 years. And we're gonna look at successful, unsuccessful. We're gonna just look at a lot of things. I'm nobody's fan, but I'm gonna break it down. We're gonna look at things. That's it, I have no opinion, no dog in a fight. I'm a grown man, I ain't nobody's fan, all right? But we're gonna talk about it. Cause it's all about how all this shit relate to real life. So let's go. Now we already know the migrants are here. I already proved y'all it's about world shit. But anyway, let's get to the nigga shit. So let's go. All right. Cause I told you rap is nothing but a cartoon. Rappers are cartoon characters or to be more respectful. I say they like comic book characters. Pick one. Hero, villain. Pick one. Either way, man, it's entertainment. So I'm not mad. All this is about entertainment, and we need to be entertained. That's it. So we're going to take a look at the entertainment and how entertainment generates a lot of money, and then we're going to look at which artists are really relevant in the, in the new world and who are, who is not. We're also going to look at those who are on their way out. We're also going to look at rappers that's about to fall on their fucking face. All right? So let's go. Because we know the past couple of days has been as beef. But before that, the internet was slow. The only topic on the internet trending has been Diddy. Diddy is a media mogul that is going through hell. He was the biggest individual in the rap game in the past 30 years. And I told y'all he was going to be the last one. And I told y'all the new head of rap is fucking Drake. Whether you like it or not. I done proved it. Now we're going to prove it again today. Why am I saying that? Because I did my little research today. And I come to my assumption that they're hating on Drake. 
Simple. Now we're going to look at some of the proof and we're going to see. So let's take a look. But even though I told y'all, what I said the other day, y'all, I said Drake low key been running the game for the past couple years. He really have been. He just he just been on the low with it. As far as when it, we're talking about sales, I'm not talking about fucking lyrics. I'm not talking about bonds. I'm not talking about who write for him. I'm talking about entertainment, work ethic, household name. Get it? Inspiration, creation, new shit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm also going to show y'all today how Drake is a smart man and his team is smart. And I'm going to show y'all some shit. I know nobody said it. I didn't watch nobody's video, but I know for a fact nobody said what I'm about to say. In my opinion, this whole shit is a chess move by Drake. It, I see this same shit going on in basketball. I kept telling y'all it's this world domination shit going on where the whole thing is to prove that now other people around the world are better than so-called black Americans. Black Americans are getting beat on every level from football to basketball to whatever you want to fucking name. Why black people been playing around too fucking much and now they're fucking mad. I got to tell y'all what it is. Why Drake been winning on this rap shit. He only thing Drake did was out hustle them and be more consistent and maybe stack his money more and maybe not burn a lot of bridges. Maybe. So we're going to look at it. So I'm just going to show y'all, man. Let's just go. All right. Because they was all friends. Also, Kendrick Lamar dropped his new disc. Within the diss song, he's speaking about Drake having a situation with Diddy. He is claiming that Drake might be on a tape with Diddy. So allegations, not, we don't know what's a fact. But you know what I said the other day on the live, what I say? I said, in my opinion, Diddy smacked Drake because Drake wouldn't give him no buns. That's what I said. Drake didn't want to give him none. They was trying to break Drake. Don't forget that. And once again, I broke down how Drake did not come through the New York door. All right, he didn't come in through them. He came in through Jay Prince and Baby. So he had a whole nother stamp, which means when Drake came to this country, he came strategic. Something, I don't know if he knew, but something told him, do not fuck with the New York rappers. Jay-Z and Diddy, don't fuck with them. I told you if he would have fucked with them, his career would have been in a toilet. And don't forget, Rick Ross was raised by Diddy and Jay-Z. They taught him the game. So I'm going to show you. When Drake came in, he came in by way of the South. He did not come in through the North. He snuck in through the South. Drake came in through where? Houston. He also made sure he laid his game down where? Atlanta, Florida, Miami. He worked his way up from the South. Remember that. We also know that Drake was on Degrassi. Yes, he was an actor. Yes, he. Yes, his mother's white, Jewish, whatever you want to say. Yes, he is from a good home. And yes, he is a nerd, if that's what you want to say. But you got to remember one thing. He, Drake, knows business. He know business from where? When he was a fucking actor. That's when he know business. So you're going to see something within Drake, too. He never got jerked. So we're going to also look at how Drake also did what? Fulfill his contract obligations. How? By working. Now, remember when y'all heard about how Pop got killed, Biggie got killed? You heard two things. Pop had a work ethic. Biggie had a work ethic. You heard Pop was trying to work his way out of his deal. You heard Biggie was trying to work his way out of his deal. Drake studied the greats. He learned from them. And that's why Drake always understood when you in a record deal, you have to work your way out of it. Not sit around like Meek Mill and the rest of them niggas waiting on checks. You work your way out the deal. You fulfill your obligation. That's how you get more money. All right? So I want to talk to you people that talk about industry shit, but you don't really know what's going on. All right? Because we're going to, I'm going to prove a point how, how they also push the narrative that Drake is getting jerked. And we're going to get into that. Now, this is my point. Everybody know that these guys were friends. Rick Ross and Drake were best of friends. They have many of songs. Stay Scheming, one of their biggest hits, Aston Martin Music. They got a song a couple years ago called Trophies, and they got a few others. So they've been rocking together. But I'm also going to get into that, too. Matter of fact, let me say it real quick before I forget. One of Drake's strategic plans from the rip was to conquer all markets. 
he made sure he conquered that Miami market because he knew you got to be lit in Miami. He knew that. Now, you also got to look at Drake as a Canadian, father from America. He also knows the recipe how to move in America and how to conquer the U.S. economy financially. So my point is this. You're going to see everything Drake did was strategic. All right. He made sure he got cool with Rick Ross. Who else? DJ Khaled. You also got to take your mind back to a time, y'all, when things were a lot different. When Drake was green, but the game was laid out different. So this was this is when this is when Diddy and them was always in Miami. This is when I told y'all Diddy wasn't doing shit with selling to rock. He had nothing going on. But this one, Rick Ross was the man. The point is, Drake knew the Miami market. Drake also had an edge. What he sings. That means what? The ladies. Drake spit the bars for the dudes. He dropped the songs for the ladies, which is what does that prove? It already shows he had talent. He was doing more than one thing. Get it? So even if somebody write for him, he's still displaying talent and work ethic. The point is we're just talking about work ethic right now because we know rap is fake. So right now we don't care who write what. All right. We know all these niggas rap about shit they ain't going to do. All of them rap about shit they never did. And it is what it is. We know rap is nothing but fantasies. It's a bunch of bullshit. We all talk about nothing. And that's what it is. All right. The point is, we're talking business. For 2024, we're going to talk business. All right. So let me show y'all. Now, y'all know Drake understood that he had to what? Get that Miami market. Then what else he understood? You got to get the A. You got to get the Atlanta market. Now, mind you, when Drake was coming up, he was hot, but he also was patched in with everybody that was hot at the time. So when Rick Ross was scorching, they was cool. They was working. When he was scorching, they was working. And this is how they made classics like Jumpman. So when you hear the beef with him in future, in future rhyming on the track with Kendrick Lamar, Metro Boomin did the beat. Metro Boomin is the same one that did the song for them, Jumpman, 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 the same nigga. All right? We also know they did an album recently. The point is, they're all family. They're all friends. They all make money. And I'm going to also tell you again, this could also be a plot so all of their shit can get back to streaming. All of their shit get to moving. Get it? It's still a plot to keep the music industry moving in their favor. Everybody named mentioned in this beef will be able to do shows, walkthroughs, get extra streams. They're all going to benefit from it. There's no losing none of this beef. I'm going to tell you the real shit. All right? That's the real shit. The, the real shit is all of them going to benefit from this shit. Don't matter who. All right. All of them going to get streams. All of them are, are now relevant. They all can now get bookings. All of that. Why? They all just dropped this songs, which means what? They all got something new to perform. It's very, very simple money. So let's go. Now, I also know a lot of this shit got to do with jealousy. Why? Drake is winning right now. He's winning. Simple and plain. I told y'all earlier, the biggest Female rapper right now is Sexy Red, period. They play her shit at NBA games, her shit on the radio all day. It is what it is. Take it or leave it. It's not about what we like. It's about what it is. All right? This is what it is. So we also know it's a lot of jealousy being promoted. Why? Because I don't see Sexy Red doing no songs or no music with nobody else as far as out of those circles. Let's give a few examples. We know for a fact we didn't hear nothing Sexy Red did with who? Rick Ross. And Rick Ross loved the ladies. So you got to understand, remember I told y'all, it's not about money. It's about relevance and influence. That's what it's all about. See, Rick Ross could be super rich. He can live in a Vander Holyfield mansion. But after a while, if he ain't getting no shine and he feel like he ain't getting no attention, he got to get back in the spotlight. That's how it go. Thank you very much, Gemini 605. Live on this members only event. Thank you very much. Shout out to all y'all. But let's go. Because it's always about the money, y'all. So now we're going to look. All right, we're going to be looking at this jealousy, this envy, and this hate. And mind you, I'm not taking up a Drake. I'm just going to call it what it is. Know why? Because I know one thing Drake did that they didn't do. And I know one thing he did do. Everything he got, the boy did earn it. Another thing I'm going to say, the boy did work. Another thing I did not know, we're going to talk about it today, is something he did that I did not fucking know. The proof is in the pudding. That's why I said we check scoreboards around here. We don't do gossip. I don't follow rap beef back and forth. I don't make speculations. But when I talk about it, it's facts. Analytics. Meaning the industry is about money, man. First thing first. Let's go. All right, because we already know Rick Ross made sure he threw his shots at Drake. 
in a song called Champagne Moments. All right. I sat and listened to it. The shit wasn't really hitting on nothing. C Mills, what up? All right, now it's good to hear the brothers get into the bars, get into the, 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 the raps, but Rick Ross shit was kind of dry. And I could tell from Rick Ross' song, it was really about a little hate he had. It is what it is. That's right, salute, C Mills. So I'm going to be honest, y'all. Rick Ross' song sounded like he had hate. Like he had a little bitterness, and he made a point to keep calling him white boy. That's one point. That's cool. But the point is, I didn't really hear no good music. So, other than that, let's take a look at some of the things Rick Ross said in his rap. He was talking about Drake with Ghost Riders. He was talking about Ghost Riders, they get the flaws of what he could have had, taking a loss. Basically, he was saying, telling Drake, hey, you got so many Ghost Riders, you got people writing your raps, they making all this money off you, Drake. That's what Rick Ross saying. I right, keep that in mind. He's saying Drake is letting a lot of people make money off him. Keep that in mind. All right? So, as you see, Rick Ross is talking this little shit. And this is what he this is one of the shots he threw. Like his moves, but he never had to fight in school. Always ran another nigga. Had to write your grooves. Flow is copy and paste. Wheezy gave you the juice. Another white boy at the park wanna hang with the crew. Long story short, you'll see Rick Ross using the race card. He's calling Drake a white boy. Thank you very much, Barbara Floyd. He using the race card. Now, like I said earlier, when they was making music together, Drake wasn't a white boy. But even if Drake is a white boy, the point of the matter is this. Why is Rick Ross saying all this now? That's what we're going to look at. So look. He is making a point that other people making money off him and that he's basically a white boy trying to be cool. But you also got to remember, they kept each other careers popping. They made each other hot. That's just what it is. They, it's called chemistry in the studio. All right. So that's just what it is. They all make good music and they all make good money. But like I said, let's take a look. We're going to look at some more of these bars. Hold up. All right. Hey, yo, y'all know it's Luke Wax. Salute all of y'all, right? But I got to get through this because them super chats be throwing me off sometimes, y'all. So if I don't say no super chat, give me a pass, all right? Sometimes it's throwing me off. I got to cook right now, y'all. Y'all know how I do. But I want to pre- thank thank y'all all, man. But y'all know how I, I got to do this, all right? This got to flow. So check it out. So this is uh, Rick Ross throwing his bars. Basically saying that wasn't the same white boy that I seen, nigga. When we were making them early records, nigga, when you were happy to be around niggas, seeing niggas holding them sticks, nigga, he talking about Drake when he was around them and all that, around the guns, fuck all that. But this is the point he said. He said, you old stunner. He said, you old motherfucking stunner your life. He's basically telling Drake, you old baby for the rest of your life. Nigga, give Wheezy some more money. Nigga, give rap lot some more money. Now, rap lot is a label that signed Drake, J Prince. Wheezy gave him the bag. Lil Wayne gave Drake the bag. And baby Stunner gave Lil Wayne the bag. They all was a team. But now I'm going to show you why Rick Ross is a hypocrite and he's a fucking hater. Boom. I'm just being honest, y'all. Now look at something. All right. We're going to look at real shit. Boom. So check it out. Yes. Cash Money did make a lot of money off Drake. But it's called a contract obligation. That's the same thing if I said to Rick Ross, look all the money Jay-Z made off you. Get it? Def Jam. But the point is, I'm going to show y'all some real shit that Drake did. Now, keep in mind, they saying that Drake is paying everybody and he basically getting whatever. They ain't say he getting jerked, but basically saying he, he going to have to pay Lil Wayne for the rest of his life. But the point is, I'm going to prove to y'all how Drake already fulfilled his obligations, meaning he was on a contract. Them contracts got paid. So like I said, you can listen to rap niggas, but I'm going to show y'all facts. All right. I'm going I'm to fast forward this shit. Fuck it. I'm going to fast forward. Then I'm going to go back. Now, look, all you got to know is this. This is how much Drake worth right now. So even if he worth 250 million, even if he done pay Lil Wayne, he's paying Stunner for the rest of his life. That's his net worth, period. Which means what? He got 250 million and we know what? He had to make way more than that because he had to pay motherfuckers, right? But I want you to see how they're going to paint Drake like he's some cl- clown getting jerked. No, he's getting a lot of money. He paid his obligations and he's still getting paid. He's not a disloyal nigga, meaning 
Drake respects Lil Wayne and them to the point where y'all put me on. So I'm always going, I'm always going to play my role. And that's what he did. Meanwhile, he didn't let Lil Wayne and them stop him from getting no other money. Get it? He ain't let him stop him from getting no other paper. That's an advantage he had. That's why I told y'all people forget Drake from another country. He got fans around the world. So the point is this. He was able to pay Wayne and them all that money and still get his. That's called hustling, y'all. Now let me show you Rick Ross. See that? Drake has a hundred million more than Rick Ross. So even though Rick Ross is talking about he got to pay Lil Wayne, he got to pay baby for the rest of his life, you will still see, even if he does, he still has more money than Rick Ross. Get it? Bingo. Now I'll get back to that money talk. Now let's go back because this shit is not about nothing but money, y'all. It's always about the money. All right. And it's a lot of jealousy now. You know why? Because these rappers have to sit back now and watch Drake get all the money. They also all remember when Drake first came in the game, but what they don't know, Drake was playing a role of a super lame. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, family. Drake was the spook that sat by the door. Remember this. Even though he could be a fucking straight nerd, that is not the point. The point is this. He came in the game, no matter what you thought of him, he played his role. He spent off of them and he built this empire right in their face. Drake probably wasn't getting high for all that Molly. Drake probably was not getting high and doing all that extra shit. Drake probably was taking his ass home and staying on his fucking grind. That's all he was doing. That's what I see. Anyway, now we're going to get to it. Keep in mind, Rick Ross, Diddy best friends. Diddy going through hell right now for many sexual allegations. Rick Ross, he's his friend. Rick Ross, artist Meek Mill, is being accused of being zesty. And Drake already killed Meek Mill career back in 2016. So Rick Ross still has a grudge from that. Don't get it twisted. And Rick Ross also knows he needs all the traction he can get right now. Because like I said, y'all, they've been having to sit back and watch Drake get all his money, all the clout, all the influence. The young people love him. And now they're getting bitter. And also in the rap, Drake made sure he made a reference to Rick Ross saying the niggas damn near 50, which means he's hating. So all you got to know is them niggas had their run already. All right, they already had their run. Now let's go, y'all, because now we're going to look at some of this shit. Boom. Also within the Rick Ross track, he was speaking on how Drake put a cis in the seas on French Montana. Now, according to what I know, it was supposed to be a song release called The Splash Brothers with Rick Ross, Drake, and Fresh Montana. But Drake put a cease and desist. For those who don't know what that means, that was Drake telling them, y'all not putting that song out. Yeah, I recorded it with y'all, but I changed my mind. And part of that is, I know, French Montana career is in a fucking gutter. For two, if this was recent, Rick Ross, you down with Diddy. But the whole point of the matter is this was a cease and desist on French Montana and Drake is telling the world he don't fuck with him. And don't forget, French Montana and Drake, they came in about the same time. But Drake is way over French. We're going to look at that. But he gave him a cease and desist so French couldn't put the song out. In industry, that means I don't fuck with you. You're not going to come up off my name. French, you's a lazy nigga. See, Drake, no French. He like, look, man, you's a lazy nigga. You don't work like that. So you think you going to come up off my name, but you ain't putting no work in like that. Now, at least Future and them still working. Y'all not working. So that's why Rick Ross mad too, y'all. He's mad because he was on a song with Drake, get it, and Fresh Montana. And Rick Ross is mad because that song is not coming out. It's always about the money. See that? I told y'all, man, they all full of shit. It's, about, it's always about paper, man. I understand America, man. It's always about money. People think it's about kitty raps. No, man. It's about money. It's always. Now, also, Future was throwing little slick jabs at, I mean, pardon me, Drake was throwing jabs at Future, but there's no guarantee if it's real, because I told you, they fuck with each other. But anyway, Drake, Drake links with Future in London. This was a couple years ago when they was doing their little thing. You know, they got their shit, uh, the good life. They did, they did, they got a lot of, they got a lot of hits together, man. The point is, Drake and Future didn't really disrespect each other, all right? So this part of how you know a lot of this shit 
ain't about nothing. The main thing you should know, Rick Ross is mad because Drake put a stop to the song that was supposed to drop. And he was on it. He wanted some of that new Drake shine. You get it? Rick Ross wanted some of that new Drake shine. He wanted some of that wave. So he got pissed and French pissed. Why? French Montana knew that Drake feature would have brought him back. Even though French Montana's are already been trashed. I told y'all to y'all fucking face. French Montana without features don't really have no fucking hits. Mostly all the French Montana hits is features. He got maybe a few by himself. That's the one song when he said, nigga, I ain't worried about nothing. The song he said, nigga, a thousand times, he got a hit. That's his hit song. But other than that, all his hits is features. So now you see why French Montana was trying to get Drake for the feature so he can be back in the game. See? And Drake said that in his raps, how niggas be needing him for hits because it's the truth. Yeah, before he needed y'all, but now y'all need him. Also, that's another thing with niggas we're going to talk about. And I want to make sure I say this shit in this episode. Niggas got a problem on this shit. Niggas will start out together. Okay, we all started together. But just because we start together, niggas think we're supposed to end together. Now, we started together, but guess what? Motherfucker, you don't work hard like me. See, I like to grind and get my shit done. You like the bullshit. You over there, you like to always be fucking late. You like to party. You like to waste time. So, yeah, we started out together. But some things happened. You know what happened? I got more focused and you got more comfortable. And that's how what? We part ways sometime. Or sometime I might be super focused. You might be distracted. So my point is, just because we start don't mean we're going to end together. And niggas got a problem with that. Niggas always got to make it like, just because we start, we're supposed to always be together. Or I'm supposed to fucking wait for you and hold your hand. That's what niggas think. Or niggas always think you owe them something. Which means what? It's never enough for a nigga. You can give a nigga whatever. It's never enough. Motherfucker, we can have 10 hits. It still ain't enough. I want you to see the mentality of a fucking nigga. Always think somebody owed them something. Always think somebody's supposed to give them something. Niggas always think you're supposed to dedicate your life to them. All right? So that's why I'm, I'm going to break this shit down for what it is. All right? Because a lot of y'all might be in these situations of motherfuckers hating, thinking you owe them shit. When you become successful, you don't owe nobody shit. Especially if you put that work in. The only time you owe a motherfucker shit is if they put your motherfucking ass on. Meaning you was a nobody and they turned you into a somebody. Like Lil Wayne did Drake. Now you see why Drake always going to... He's never going to bite the hand that feed him. It's called loyalty. So even though Lil Wayne don't put him on, whether he sent him money or not, he didn't sit up under Lil Wayne ass and baby ass waiting for them fucking checks and depending on them niggas. He got to his own money, created his own shit. That's called business. But you're going to see most rappers in America are fucking hoes. I told y'all that. They always need a check. Most of them are jerked in their fucking deal. They ain't even get out their first deal. Most of them. All right? So let's continue on, man, because it's always about the money. Now, also on a song with Metro Boomin called Like That, Kendrick Lamar allegedly started this beef. But according to Drake, this beef was already cooking. According to Drake, niggas was already hating on him from the background, and there was already a lot of tension. You also have to remember they deal with the same women. They pillow talk, word gets around, and that's how they catch beef anyway. But the point is, on this track, Kendrick Lamar, Threw shots at Drake. And he said a ball with Prince live out. Prince outlives Michael Jackson. Because Drake is considered to be the modern day Michael Jackson. We're going to look at that. And Kendrick Lamar was saying he's the modern day Prince. Basically, you know, on that, just, 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 just kicking raps on that type of level. You get it? Basically, you know how Prince and Michael was competitors. They were both at the top, but they were competitors music wise. That's what Kendrick Lamar was saying him and Drake is competing. Uh, anyway, but I will say this, Kendrick and Drake, as far as when it comes to making music, they are making music. You know, they are making respectable music. That's not trash. I get them that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get them that. Long story short, all right, Future and Kendrick shined on the track, the Metro Booming Beat. Even though Drake has hits with Future on Metro Booming Beats, they have a lot of hits together. They got a whole album together. So that's why he threw... Drake threw slick bars at Metro Boomin and said, Metro Boomin, nigga, just keep making beats. Shut up, nigga. Just keep beating the drums. He ain't really, that ain't really disrespect. You know what I'm saying? They didn't really go too far on each other. But with him and Kendrick, it's personal. 
with him and Rick Ross, that shit personal. I will say that. Kendrick Lamar and his raps, they're talking about they're gonna rob Drake, Drake getting robbed for his chains when he come to Cali. When he come to Cali, he better not be lacking. They talking that real talk. You feel me? That's what they talking. And Drake said he gonna wear his chains. He said he gonna have bodyguard like, like Whitney. He said he gonna have them bodyguards, so he like whatever. But this was going on, y'all. Now, this is what Drake said to Kendrick. He said to Kendrick, your last one bricked. You really not on shit. He basically saying the last album you dropped, that shit flopped, bro. So he basically saying, Kendrick, you ain't popping like that no more. Y'all see where this shit going? But I will say this. On Kendrick's verse, he did say some shit on his on his on his on his uh his reply. He said some real shit. Now, one thing he said, he said he ain't selling his soul. He said he don't give a fuck if he only sold 200000 And he was basically saying how his shit is still in order, intact. He ain't selling his soul. And Kendrick also said on his diss track, allegedly, that Drake did something with Diddy, and they got the footage, allegedly. That's what Kendrick said. But Kendrick made a point to say he never sold his soul, and he ain't selling his soul. All right? He said he don't give a fuck if his shit flopping. That's what he's saying. He just said he's going to make the music he make, basically. So, as you see, Drake told him, your last one brick. You're really not on shit. They make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit. And he's telling Kendrick, put your contract. He said, pull your contract because we got to see the split. He's basically saying, Kendrick Lamar, you signed the TDE records and you breaking bread with a lot of people. Top Dog owns your label. And he's basically saying, Kendrick, you on a label with a nigga named Top Dog, and them niggas taking all your money anyway. Meaning, you getting money, but you got a big split. That's what Drake's saying in the bars. He's basically saying, Kendrick, you doing your thing, but your money ain't like mine. So I told y'all, it's all about money. It's all about money. It's all about money. All right? So let's go. Here we're going to prove numbers at the end of the episode. Drake also said, you won't, you won't ever take no chain off us. How the fuck you big? Stepping with a, a size seven men's on. Long story short, they was threatening to take his chain. And as you see, Drake is saying, You're not going to take nothing. He's saying, First of all, you're a little nigga. You only wear a size seven. So basically, trying to say, Kendrick Lamar, you're a little nigga and you ain't going to do shit. But I ain't trying to get back and forth with the bars. I just want to show y'all certain important things in the bars that was important. All right. So let me move this. Let me move this banner, man. All right. So this also what Drake said. He said, You in a scope right now. Don't forget, Kendrick Lamar is on Interscope Records. He said, you in the scope right now, and you're going to feel the aftermath of what I write down. Aftermath is the label Dr. Dre signed Kendrick. So he says right now, he said, you in the scope right now. All eyes on you. And you're going to feel the aftermath of what I wrote down. And this is another thing Dre said. He Look what he said. He said, I'm at the top of the mountain. So you tight right now. Just to have this talk with your ass, I had to hike down. Me Basically saying, nigga, you ain't on my level. Just by me making this diss rap, I had to come down to your level. Because I don't really, I ain't really with all this beef shit. Y'all niggas with the beef shit. That's really what he's saying, all right? That's my version decoded. So let me show you something. So as you see, this is the thing he said right here. He said, I'm at the top of the mountain now. He said, no, I'm at the top of the mountain. So you tight now. Just to have this talk with your ass, I had to hike down. Big difference between Mike then and Mike now. So I told y'all. It is being said that Drake is the modern day Michael Jackson, man. Not according to public opinion. It's according to those fucking accolades. Like I told y'all, Drake has been out hustling and out working every single American rapper, period. These are the facts. All right. So he said, I can never be nobody number one fan. <laughs> your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. He's talking about a lot of these niggas talking about basically y'all niggas wasn't getting no real hits. You got with me. That's what he's saying. Basically, y'all ain't had no hits. Y'all got with me like that. Now, look. He said, I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. I'm the hit maker y'all depend on. Backstage in my city, it was friend zone. The point is, he's telling you, I get money around the world. You niggas are local. Y'all don't get no world money. Now, y'all see what I was telling y'all about world music now? If the American economy was to shut down right now, Drake gonna still get his money where overseas. And that's what he's talking about. 
New World Order money. So when I say New World Rap Order, that is the New World Rap Order. What is that? The new way for rappers to get paid. Didn't I tell you? They got to get world money. They're going to get money from the rainbow community around the world. And all that equivalent to dollars. Boom. Because remember, it's entertainment. What you in the game for if you're going to play, right? If you in the game, you're going to get the money, right? All right, well, let's remember that. They all want the money. So look. That was the whole point when he said that part. When he said that whole part right there, that's the most important part of what he said. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside, outside of the NAN. I'm out, in, I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. So long story short, he's telling these niggas, you, you niggas can't even go overseas and get no money. And he's basically saying, I'm the Michael Jackson now. And we're going to prove it in a minute. All right? Because same thing, man. People forget when you're in the game, it's about them charts. It's about that revenue. See that? He is the Michael Jackson of this time, y'all. Yes, he is. Now, another thing is, hold up. That's that's why I messed up at. Now, I was I didn't get to load that part up. The point of the matter is this. Y'all can look it up right now. You look it up right now. Drake is tied with Michael Jackson, man. Drake is tied with Michael Jackson for the most number one hits by a male artist these are facts you also got to remember he did it faster than everybody he did it faster than michael he out hustled everybody he did it fast that's what you got to remember he did it fast y'all also i understand it's the internet world it's not about that the, the kids we're dealing with facts he is the modern day michael jackson when it comes to generating that money off of music get it hits that's what drake been doing and all of them been checking the scoreboard and all of them know what the fuck is going on. Now I get to prove to y'all what I said, how Drake already been over all of these dudes a long time ago. I also told you, now you see why Beyonce never collaborated with Drake? Where's the Drake-Beyonce song together? Can you now see why Jay-Z would have never let that shit happen? Can you now see when Drake was a green bean, they were trying to shape and mold him and manipulate him back then, but he probably already knew what time it was? That's why they mad, y'all. That's part of it. This, this beef ain't about nothing. It's about paper. They're losing. American rappers have to watch. One of the only rappers irrelevant is Future, Kendrick Lamar. See, they're going to still get their money. And I'm going to prove that too. But all of those low level fucking rappers, they ain't going to do shit. Another hot rapper right now that is trending around the world is 21 Savage. You got to remember, he ain't been in the game that long. But I will say this. He got that one setback when he got arrested, remember? But 21 Savage, he's still decent for where he's at. But the point is this. This was when they performed in Canada. They was in London. They was on tour. I told y'all, world music. So I'm going to show y'all something. This is all the stuff that was been going on while these rappers in America have been struggling, all right? This is a way how they generate revenue while these niggas can't get a show. That's why Drake been trolling them and clowning them because he knows he's still getting booked. I showed y'all, we spoke about how Kanye West tried to book a show in Brazil. They said, no, we good. We don't need you, Kanye. We don't want you. Why? Bad Bunny's winning right now. I already broke all this stuff down, but I'm going to show you, man. This ain't about preference, about facts. Look up. All you got to do is put in Drake, Michael Jackson, you look at, you put in Drake Awards, you put in, just all you got to do, just put it in. You'll see. Right now, he's tied with Michael Jackson, y'all. This shit real. I didn't even know that. But you see, he's still dropping diss tracks. The name of this track is called Drop and Give Me 50. These niggas really got me out here talking like I'm 50. Basically saying, niggas got me out here beefing. <laughs> but it's okay. reason why I say that, because... This is the modern world, y'all. In this modern world of rap, it's not about who you like no more. Rap is being run by a whole nother entity. It's about streams. It's about outselling them tickets. It's about having a cult following. It's about getting corporations rich and you getting rich in return. You got to remember, man, Drake, his sponsors be Apple and shit like that. That means a lot. I'm showing you how he was able to multitask, pay niggas he owed, 
still got to fucking go on tour, still got to make music, doing all this shit, rap beefs, but Drake is an entertainer. I'm not coming from perspective, oh, Drake is the realest. No, I'm breaking it down. He's an entertainer, and he mastered his entertainment. He didn't play with the shit. He started out as a low-level actor, but he understood. When I get in that rap game, I'm all in. That's what he did. All he did was I hustle niggas. That's it. He wasn't with the Ciroc boys. So long story short, now we're going to look at the money. It's all about the money, y'all. So we ain't going to be that long. We're going to look at the money, what all this shit about. Drake is over every single rapper in America financially. Facts. Right now. He is the top rapper in the world. Right now. Yes, we also know he didn't write all his raps. We also know he is not just a rapper. He sings. But you got to understand one thing. Drake is an entertainer for real, meaning he really does music. He's really going to do his shows. When you go see a show, you're going to get your dollar. He's an entertainer. He didn't get in the game to be a tough guy and play around. He's no different from the rest of these rappers. Then they say Rick Ross was an officer. He's not a real rapper. Rick Ross, they having raps about pulling choppers and busting. The rap with Drake, he's talking about shooting guns. Well, they still talk about what they're going to kill. They ain't going to kill shit. But Drake is the only one that's a lame. He's the only one that's a nerd. He the one that ain't gonna shoot nothing. None of them are. None of them are. All right, facts. So don't, don't forget that. They all the same. But Drake is worth 250 million off hustling. He did it fast. Remember that he did it fast. Plus, he had to pay niggas back. Keep that in mind. Now let's look at Rick Ross. 150 million. I showed you right here. He worth 150 million, but most of Rick Ross's recent money comes from wing stop. That is not all rap money. Get it? That's from wing stop. Why? The past couple years, Rick Ross been sitting on his ass getting that wing stop money. Correct? Check. Boom. Drake is still winning with the music. You winning with the wing stop. Other than that, let's keep it pushing. We're looking at which rappers are the real rappers really eating the current rappers also that can eat all around the world. That's what we're looking at. It's not about Rick Ross, but it's about Travis Scott. Because Travis Scott is one of the modern day rappers that ain't going nowhere. He's going to always eat around the world. He just came from overseas because he knows the game. All of the rappers you will see going overseas are the ones getting the real money. The broke rappers, they're not getting it. They're not getting booked. They don't want their ass in Japan. They don't want them in Russia. You're not coming over there. They don't need you. You're over with. All right, little Boosie and the rest of you niggas, just being real. No disrespect, just being real. It's time y'all wake up out of fantasy land. Now, this is what I did not know. I'm not going to lie. I ain't know Kendrick Lamar was worth $75 million, man. Also, now let's look at him. He was in a deal, Dr. Dre. He's with TDE Records. He He's in a contract. Niggas say he got to pay other niggas, but what? He's still eating good. And I'm going to give Kendrick Lamar his clout for the fact that he up. But he act real, real, real humble. I'm going to get that to him. He's really up, y'all. 75 mil, he's, the boy is up. He's up in a short amount of time, too. So I'm going to give him his respect that he respects the craft of rap and he still stick the way he do. I'm going to give him that. I ain't got nothing against Kendrick Lamar. Salute, Christopher. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for supporting this platform and the content. Appreciate it. Let's go. All right, we're looking at modern-day figures, y'all. Real money. It's another thing I did not know. I didn't know J. Cole was worth $60 million. Why are we looking at this? Because I'm going to show you the so-called nerd lane rappers. They get in the bag around the world. Then we're gonna look at the so-called hood niggas, the ghetto shit, the street shit, that ratchet hood shit. Them niggas going broke. We're gonna prove it. I didn't know J. Cole was 60 million. Very, very, very humble. I'm gonna give it to him. These are you're looking at the smart rappers, y'all. These are the smart ones. Who's the smart rappers? Drake, Travis Scott, even though people got trampled at his shit. He ain't that smart, but Kendrick Lamar, he's smart. J. Cole, they smart. They're entertainers that work their craft. Now look, Lil Wayne, 170 million. But you gotta remember this. Now look, Drake got more than Lil Wayne now, y'all. So remember the rap I just showed y'all how Rick Ross was talking about how you gotta pay, you gotta pay baby. You gotta pay Lil Wayne to the day you die, nigga. Guess what? The nigga's over Lil Wayne now. If that ain't fucking hustling, you tell me. So you mean to tell me I got more money than the nigga that put me on? But also, you got to remember something. Drake is over Lil Wayne. 
Drake just got over Lil Wayne, but it's not the point. You got to remember one thing about Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne don't really do shit, y'all. Lil Wayne be fucking chilling. So he's going to have 170 mil because he just be chilling. He don't really do shit. Get it? He, Lil Wayne ain't got to work no more. He's straight. What else Lil Wayne showed you, man? That's why I told you, man. You got to respect Lil Wayne when it comes to entertainment, man. That's why I keep telling dumb niggas everything ain't about the street. Entertainment is entertainment. And once you niggas started mixing the streets for entertainment, street principles, or rap, into, you niggas are dumb, man. All right, the point is this, man. Lil Wayne understood he, it was a time for him to get away from that gangster shit, and he started getting his life. His, he started getting his business together. But the point is, you know, real individuals when you see a millionaire that made another millionaire, and you know he made Nicki a fucking millionaire. Don't forget, it was Baby made him a millionaire. That's why they cash money brothers. Young money, cash money. They make motherfuckers millionaires, man. So I ain't going to hate on none of the motherfuckers. You hear me? Because they did what the so-called New York rappers ain't do. And what they New York rappers is never going to fucking do is make you a millionaire. It's not going to happen. All right? And Drake knew that. That's why he knew to leave the niggas the fuck alone. If Drake would stay with them niggas, he'd have been raped, ran through, his career would have been over. All right? Just like the rest of anybody on fucking Diddy label. They're done. All right, so let's get back to the money talk. Cause like I said, Lil Wayne, 170 mil, but he ain't doing shit. He chilling. Money talk, French. All these niggas was trending at the same time. Look at French Montana, 35 million. What that mean, y'all? That nigga shit is sinking. Also, don't forget the economy is different. So the money you're looking at is not really the actual same money. All right, 35 million is really more like 24 million, 23 million. But we're not gonna go there. But we're gonna look at. Niggas that got 35 million. Now you see why Drake said, nigga, you ain't coming up off my name. Cease and desist. You ain't, you, he like French, you ain't been really doing nothing. You ain't hot. You cool, nigga. You ain't gonna cool me off. Guess what? You get with a motherfucker that ain't hot, he's gonna cool off. That's why I'm not quick to do no features with nobody. I'm gonna keep being me. No disrespect, though. I'm just trying to tell you how the game go. All right? When you hot, stay hot. When you're hot, you get with somebody cold, you cool off. See that? Everybody's up over French. Now let's look at French. Don't forget, French Montana and Drake started out together. 35 million. Look like you're about 215 million short, French. So basically, Drake don't respect your grind, nigga. He said, fuck that music. I ain't putting that shit out. Season this is. You will not come up off my name, French, and be relevant again. Drake is watching French and these niggas die. That's what that means. When you when you do a feature with a nigga, that's called a lifeline. See that? When you don't give a nigga a feature, you watch him. You watching them drown. That's what Drake doing. He watching these niggas drown. Maybe he heard a lot of pillow talk of niggas talking behind his back. Who knows? But one thing is for sure. Him and Lil Wayne still cool. Nicki on tour right now. So your money is still getting their money. But we also going to talk about Nicki in a few. French $35 million. What does that mean? These niggas don't got generational wealth, y'all. They just don't. Offset $28 million. Now, he has 28 according to this, but you got to remember, this nigga leased off Cardi B. So I'm going to say he leased off Cardi B and was sitting on his money and spending hers. That's what I'm going to say. But the point is this. It's not about offset. I'm, I'm going to show you all a pattern. I'm just showing you all the pattern of money. Now, we know French been out way before offset, but offset somehow passed him and caught up. He ain't passing, but he caught up to him quick. Point. Don't forget, he also was in a three-man group. But now we're going to look at the numbers. 21 Savage, 16 million. He ain't, just been, out, he ain't been out that long. But that's decent for him, right? Now we're going to keep going down. I'm going to keep showing you some shit. NBA young boy, the nigga that's in the house all the time, 10 million. He ain't as big as he be talking neither. He ain't as big as he be talking. He's supposed to be bigger than that. But the point is this. He's a young boy. He got the money. He's straight. But I'm still going to show you how NBA young boy is still doing better than other rappers. Also, I want you to see how NBA young boy might trend all day. His name popping. He's going to get all this noise. But you're going to see Lil Wayne is 10 times 15, 17 times bigger than that young boy. Get it? When it comes to that money bag. 17 times bigger than this bag. That's so why I was telling you about these little niggas on their way down. So you do you think little, little NBA young boy is going to make more money or he going to make less? They're all on their way down, y'all. Especially if they don't know how to save money. All street motherfucking rappers about to fall on their face. Let me show you some more. That's always on the internet running their fucking mouth. Now, I told y'all recent, Lil Baby was the last rapper from america to be big meaning played on the radio the hottest thing smoking little baby on his way out and little baby was my example that rap is on his way out 
Point is, all that shit he did, look how much he got, $8 million. Now, I will give him, he made that fast, and he made that $8 million fast, but for real, for real, the money he generated, that money ain't shit. We also know what? Little Baby likes to hang around the billionaire by the name of Michael Rubin, and it's been alleged that Little Baby is a boyfriend. Because when you got $8 million, standing next to a billionaire, that ain't shit, but like $8. Get it? Showing y'all a pattern of money, man. So this is what I'm showing y'all. Now y'all see why Drake is at the top? Financially, these are little boys to him, man. Now, 21 Savage is man. But you see, he reached out to 21 Savage and helped 21 Savage go get some money. He helped, I think he helped 21 Savage also get his passport in Canada. So you'll see that young money circle, they still in the helping people and doing shit, regardless. But that ain't the point. We talking about big bank, take little bank, man. All right. So, little baby, eight million, man. How far he gonna get on that eight million, y'all? You think you think little baby gonna make more than that anytime soon, or he gonna go down? What you think, y'all? The nigga career is already over. Nobody wanna hear little baby no more. They rather hear the female rappers. So let's let's, let's keep doing down the list. Come on, y'all, let's go. Oh shit, Jim Jones, the blood nigga that was with Dipset, four hundred thousand dollar net worth, y'all. Now y'all see why Jim Jones hot in the fuck out. Now y'all see why I told y'all these niggas only stay relevant because of the fucking internet tricking you motherfuckers. 400,000, man. Sad. Y'all see that? This is a nigga from Harlem that, that, that never learned how to save his money. This is a nigga from Harlem, New York that never made a lot of investments. This is a nigga from Harlem, New York that always wanted to show us how many chains he could fucking buy and how many Lambos he can paint over. That's it. What niggas really got, y'all? Time has passed. 20 years plus have passed. These are your fucking heroes right here. Jim Jones, 400,000. Holler at me, y'all. Talk. I need y'all to talk up. 400,000. The nigga came and bought a fucking, uh, he came and bought a new fucking Ferrari. In that world he in, he can't buy a new, he can't buy a new Rolls Royce truck. He's short. Now get it now? But y'all ain't get it when he sold a house. Dame Dash. Start the founder of Rockefeller Records. Allegedly, that was sold for 30 million 20 years ago. Hundred thousand dollars. He makes the same as a registered nurse. But he was in a rap game touching millions, rubbing elbows with a lot of people. Now he's a nobody. See that? We're talking money talk. Now you see why I said that it's all about rulership with this game. Now you see why I told you why this man at the top. Now, nowadays, and not talking about his influence. It ain't the point. Let's continue on to these fake ass rappers. Money bag, yo. Name money bag worth four million dollars. And that rap game, that's low, 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 low money. The nigga buy about uh he buy about three cars and he he, he gonna be doing bad. You get it? See that? Money bag yo is another nigga, internet shenanigans. He signed to Money Bad Yo, Money Bad Yo getting all this fuck. No, he signed to Yo Gotti, Yo Gotti getting a lot of that nigga money, straight up, just like Glorilla. All right, they rapping for Yo Gotti. So I want to show y'all, y'all, y'all was on the internet all these years watching these fucking idiots. It's okay, but see, y'all was following them because of what they bought and what they showed you in the stacks of money, in the car, in the outfits. Nigga, all that shit was borrowed. All that shit was limited. I'm showing you, black people, your reality is over. You've been fucking lied to. You've been lied to. You've been living a life of lies, man. Four million dollars, but his name Money Bag Yo. Four milli. Now let's look. Fans accused Money Bag Yo of throwing fake money at his concert. The boy done got caught throwing out fake money months ago. See that? So I was trying to tell y'all, man. It's people that have legitimate jobs that got that kind of money. Guess what, y'all? You can make that type of money. Owning a fucking fast food chain. See, remember, we gotta remember these are rappers. They got money, right? No businesses, no franchises, no nothing, no, no nothing. See that? I'm just showing y'all, man. You got thought about chains and shit because the nigga show you the chains he got. This shit don't mean nothing when it comes to the real world. That's why I say the new, <laughs> the new rap world order. You know what I'm saying? It's a new way things are going. It's about the money, man. New world rap order, man. Or the new order of rap. Cardi B, 80 million. Not gonna take none from Cardi. She might have had a hundred if it wasn't for offset. 
But now something I'm really going to show y'all, and this something else I didn't know. Shit, fuck my head up, y'all. Give me a second. Give me a second. This is what I did not know. And now I see why Nikki had to hit that road. Check this shit out, y'all. Now, look. I don't know why certain shit I loaded up in here. What the fuck? Here we go. Bob, look. Rapper, singer, songwriter Nicki Minaj is worth an estimated $100 million. According to Celebrity Net Worth, admits she wasn't always so careful with her spending. Now, I want to say this because I know this for a fact. And this is why I was tripping. A while ago when I checked Nicki Minaj's net worth, she was at $150 million. She was at $150 million, y'all. But I peeped. Since she got with her husband, you see why her money going down now? Now, also... Y'all know I've been campaigning on the internet. The number one person telling y'all Nicki Minaj is blackball. Do you see what I was telling you? She was up 150 million. 50 million of her money is fucking gone. It's going down the drain. Why? Remember, she been in the house for years. She ain't been working like that. Plus, she was blackball, had the baby. She got a man. He's helping her spend all her fucking money. See that? 100 million. What's my point? Look how long it took her to make that money. But you're going to see real quick Cardi B catching up to that ass. That's my point. That's why Nikki had to go back on tour. She peeped game. Oh, shit. Cardi got 80. Nikki is only 20 million over her now. She was way more than that. I re- I'm not going to lie. I remember because I looked it up back when they had real, real beef. I looked it up. At this point, I remember uh, Nikki was like 150 million. Cardi was at some shit like, like 16 million, 20 million, some shit like that. But she been catching up. Why? Because she been working. Cardi been working. Cardi got recent hits. Nikki been chilling in the house and she's blackballed. Lizzo. Lizzo was winning till she got blackballed. To my opinion, Beyonce and them set up, Lizzo had the gay community. But that ain't the point. The thing about Lizzo, I broke down the yard while Lizzo is important. Lizzo got rich fast. She came out and t- she basically blew up in 2019. She basically made her earned the bones in 2019. And last year, she was already at 40 million fast, which means what? She's half a Cardi and damn near half a Nikki that quick. Get it? Hustling, hustling, hustling. She's almost half of Nikki. Cardi is catching up to Nikki. Why? It's been said that Nikki be getting high, allegedly. Her husband, she been, I'm showing you, she on her way down. Y'all get it? It's about the money, y'all. And if they didn't stop Lizzo tour, Lizzo would have been up more than that. Because don't forget, the tours is what, is what get them their money. So when you get a million dollars a show and you do 20 cities real quick, you done made a quick 20 million. Get it? When they ain't working, they just spending. They ain't making. And when you're not getting booked, you're not making no money. Get it? And when these people get booked, like Money Bad Yo, they get booked at clubs. The niggas ain't booking the whole arena. No. They ain't got enough hits. But I kept telling y'all, you ain't got hit records. You ain't got catalogs. You ain't getting no real bookings. You're going to do little clubs and shit. You're going to be with a whole bunch of other rappers. Do your little part, your little 10 minutes, but you ain't headlining shit. That's how you know who big. See, Lil Wayne don't got to drop no more music. That nigga always going to headline. If Lil Wayne tickets going to sell in your city, the motherfuckers going to sell out. He ain't got to do no more music. Why, y'all? His catalog. I'm breaking it down for people that don't know the ins and outs of the industry. Once you got a catalog, you forever going to be paid. You got a catalog of platinum hits and, and, and number one hits. Lil Wayne... Could, could could rap the block is hot when he's 65 years old and still get a hundred grand for a show. Get it? That's Lil Wayne. He got them hits. That's what them, that's why them hits are important, y'all. You ain't got them hits. You ain't as big as you think you are, Lil Boosie. Wipe me down. Told you he ain't no hits since wipe me down. The boy worth two million dollars, man. I told you Boosie became an internet nigga. They make their couple dollars on the internet, do a little bit of walkthroughs, do a whole lot of talking, not enough music production. Not enough music work. Not enough work on the craft. Too busy concerned with trying to be super real. And we know in the hood, being real means you're going to be real broke. All right? Because if your hood, if your fan base is broke people, you're going to be broke. It's just how it go. But that's not the point. The point is, Boosie stopped working on his craft, and he just became an internet nigga talking a lot. That's why he only got $2 million. Get it? And that ain't a lot. In the new world, that's really like $1 million, man. And he got paid taxes on that. So do the math. All right. You see how much Lil Wayne over there, fool? Drake is. 
150 times more than Lil Boosie. Now you see why his name Lil Boosie? Because his money is very, very little, man. Very, very little. These are the dudes y'all run around for, man. Man, money ain't about nothing. You go, you can have that same money on the real estate. That's how we know Boosie's stupid. Why? That nigga ain't buy up the whole Louisiana. He ain't buy up shit. Even Young Thug was over 100 million before he went to jail, y'all. These are facts. So I'm just showing y'all your heroes. Kodak Black. Kodak Black. Y'all see he on his way down. Five million. He ain't big as y'all thought he was. Kodak Black could have been bigger. What happened? He got locked up. Whatever happened? He lost momentum. He started spiraling. That fucks your money up, y'all. Still got to pay taxes. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think Kodak is going to go up? Or do you think it's going to go down? What you think? But you're also going to see if they were just smart to, to make the right investments, they'll be straight. But they rather keep the rap shit going. Get it? And that's why they fall off. Five million, two million. Who love Boosie and Kodak Black? The hood. Meanwhile, in the real world, the real scheme of things, other shit going on, y'all. 80 million, 75 million. All the guys who ain't trying to pander to the streets, trying to convince you how tough and hood they are, you're going to see they're winning. This is also my part of showing y'all the streets is fucking dead. How we know that? Because the street rappers going broke fast as a bitch. That's how we know the street's dead. Four million dollars. All right? So you can put money bag yo together <laughs> with Lil Boosie and Kodak Black. The NBA young boy, damn, they still love all three of them. And this nigga don't do nothing but be in the house. But he works. So I'm showing y'all the modern day world. Now let's look at this. The city girls went from poverty to a combined three million net worth and show no signs of slowing down. Well, this was before the beef. This was before the Diddy shit. Do you think they're going to go up or down? What you think? I'm going to keep showing you these American rappers. They're on their way in the toilet, y'all. Diddy is the start of the ending. According to reliable sources such as Forbes and Bloomberg, Young Miami, her net worth was an estimated to be around $5 million. However, it's worth noting that her net worth was once above $10 million before a legal case settlement required her to pay $5 million to another music artist. So can you see how Young Miami was up and then she got jerked for $5 million? Can y'all see? Now, nah, man, Young Miami on her way up or down, y'all. Where's she going to get new money from? Her name got all this dirt on it. Where's she going to get new money, y'all? Where's she, who who, who going to give her a bag? A real bag. This is what I was trying to tell y'all. Now it's about big corporation dollars. See, when you big now, you get big sponsor dollar. Big money, y'all. It's different. It's not like before. It's not like that ghetto rap shit, nigga. No, big money. You in it to win or you in it for the fame? You're going to see Young Miami got a big internet influence. You're going to see one thing and you're going to learn this shit today. All oh, mostly the rappers you love that got big internet presence. You're going to see one thing. Their money ain't that up. Their money ain't up like that. Kodak always on the internet. Not a lot, but we know one thing. Boosie always on the fucking internet. You see his money? Two million. Because that's his job. But now I'm going to show you who got more, more, more money than all these motherfuckers. The Weekend. 300 million. And don't forget, it was Drake that put the weekend on. See the chain of command? Now you see how it is when you just make music and entertain, don't worry about that hard shit, fulfill your obligations, and just do your work. Showing you, man. Show y'all one more time, man. Whatever y'all want to call it, this is what it is, man. I'm going to show y'all. Check it out. Just the real chain right here. This the real food chain. Let's look at the food chain, y'all. This is called Share One, Care One. Lil Wayne got the money, man. He got the money from baby. He might have got jerk. Whatever the fuck you want to say. 170 million. All right. He put Drake on when Drake was a nobody in a rap game. And now we know what, y'all. Drake is up. 250 million. Same family tree. All right. That same family tree. Got who in it, y'all? Y'all already know. Nikki in that tree. 100 million. Drake. Gave birth to the weekend, 300 million. They all family. Get it? All was in them booths together. All was getting to their bag. Everybody I just said, they all got what, y'all? 
accolades. Some people get in the game to win. Some people get in the game to play around. Because Drake understand when it's all said and done, it's about those trophies, dog. It's about those trophies and accolades. Why? That's the craft he chose to be in. It's about those accolades. Not trying to prove to niggas how tough you are, how many guns you got, how much you get high. It's about the business and the money. Simple. All right? So don't forget that. Also, I didn't show. I thought I put Future Net Worth on here. But Future is worth 50 million. So he's not broke. Future's worth 50 million. He could be up more, but he worth 50. He's not bad. But Future tricked off a lot of money out of the baby mothers. So he ain't up like that. The point is this, man. He's up, but Drake is 200 million over Future, man. So that's why I'm showing y'all what all a lot of this shit is all about. All right? It's about women, power, all that. Kendrick is about the boss. He basically saying, Drake, you don't spit better than me, nigga. And that's what it is. And he's saying he ain't selling his soul. So either way, it was good for music. It is what it is, y'all. But I'm just showing you it's all about money. And the main point is the number one motherfucker that had no business in this shit is motherfucking Rick Ross. He the main nigga. And what? He's mad because Drake blocked the song that he was on. So now y'all see what all this shit about? Ain't about nothing else. I ain't watched nobody else's video on this shit. I just did my own little homework today. I never hop on shit when it's a fad. I get it. I get to it in my own time. And it's a saying. When it comes to certain topics, you don't want to be the first or the last. So it is what it is. On that note, man, I'm going to be real, y'all. I'm about to get out of here. Because you know why? Man, I'm about to watch the playoffs, NBA playoffs, man. So I'm going to be honest, y'all, man. Y'all know I usually drop the link, but I ain't going to be able to drop the link today because your boy got to go. But I made sure I had to put this on for y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to release it for the replay people. But this is my opinion, man. What? Man, everything I told y'all taking place, man. It's all about the money now. This new world order, we're dealing with AI. We're dealing with intelligence. It's all about algorithms. It's about study. It's about quick flips, quick turnovers, quick investments. It's about safe investments. You get it? That's where the world is going at. Everything that you love is going to be based on the dollar. We used to love rap, right? It ain't about that no more, y'all. It's about the dollar now. It's about multitasking, I'll say that. When you're a rapper now, see a real rapper, Drake showed him the game. I'm just showing y'all how the shit work. He showed as a rapper, this is what you got to do. As a rapper, you got to what? Make good music. You got to make good music. What else? You got to have your business in order. You got to be branded. You have to have a work ethic. You can't burn a lot of bridges. That was all the things Drake did. That's why he up. He's no different than the rapper. It's just that you got to remember, a lot of them was playing around, y'all. They was bullshit. And they were bullshitting and bullshit contracts. When you're in a bullshit contract, the longer you take to get out of that shit, the more you're going to be fucked up in the end. Drake knew that. That's why he been got Lil Wayne in him out of his pocket, y'all. That's how this shit work. Get it? So, just showing y'all. Hold on. Who else up here? He sold his catalog for $75 million. Yeah, y'all also see why Future sold his catalog, right? He only worth 50 million now, man. So don't think niggas was selling shit because they were straight. No, no. They know what's up. What's up, Ski? Giovanni the Empress. What's up, y'all? Appreciate it. Yeah, y'all. I gotta chill out a little while, get back to you know what I mean, watch the little game tonight. And I'm gonna get working on this content for tomorrow. So y'all know what's up. Other than that, man, I ain't gonna hold y'all too long. I just want to holler at my people, man. Y'all know I love my fucking people, man. It is what it is, man. That's it. What's up, Stoney? Shout out to all the members. Shout out to everybody that made it. Like I said, this ain't personal. I ain't got a dog in a fight. But I'm just going to tell you, man. You use these rappers to be, your, to be a symbol. Meaning, I can look at Drake and know everything that's going on. Drake represents a person that is successful. Around people that used to be successful, but didn't have to work at the Also, time has passed by. Some of them don't want to understand their time is up. And that's why when you win, you also got to know when to step up, step to the side. Like Tom Brady, when you're a winner, you got to know when to step away. And it's okay. But right now, it's Drake having his day. But until that happens, is nobody going to knock him off. None of it's going to work. You know why? Drake has a fan base that is a cult following. So no matter how much you diss him, it's not going to work. So I told people a long time ago with that beef shit, beef no longer works. Everybody fuck with who they fuck with now.
beef and about number the trending topic. So on that note, y'all, we're gonna check out. Thanks for tapping into the show. Funnel Fame, another episode of the What's Poppin' Show. Y'all know what it is. Y'all have a good one. We out. One.